this is Jane Glover here and welcome to my home for this series of uh, LMP at home and here in lockdown London I too am at home I like the rest of the world um, and the first thing to say therefore is I hope you are all well and staying healthy and staying sane and good luck to everybody in this extraordinary time and greetings to my fellow musicians. This is a tough time for all of us, but as it is for the whole of the planet, and we just have to hang in there. Um, anyway, many years ago, I was music director, artistic director, conductor of the London Mozart Players. And so I'm delighted to be invited by them to join in this at-home project. I look back on my M Mozart players years with tremendous affection and tremendous gratitude uh, we achieved a great deal together we explored a great deal together we did a lot of touring masses of concerts quite a bit of recording and uh, it was just wonderful and of course the backbone of all our repertoire was our eponymous composer Mozart as it still is uh, for that great ensemble uh, so thinking about uh, Mozart at home makes one think about chamber music, of course, and my goodness, did he not write the most wonderful um, output of chamber music, those unbelievable quartets that he played with Haydn and other friends in Vienna. Wouldn't you have liked to be a fly on the wall then? Um, and then piano quintets and uh, piano quartets and this and that and of course the string quintets my goodness and then wind music the wind chamber music now some of that of course was not necessarily to be played in the home but to be played more uh, outdoors uh, wind instruments typically hold their pitch better than string instruments when taken outside and uh, anyway uh, instruments wind instruments that had been associated with the military um, were also quite appropriate for playing entertaining music uh, in the open air. So uh, wind octets were very customary in the 18th century. Uh, pairs of oboes, clarinets, uh, bassoons and horns to make up a lovely uh, ensemble of, of eight wind instruments. And of course Mozart knew all about that and wrote for that combination but of course he never just took an idea or a format or a formula and did it again he always had to do something different and one of the most extraordinary pieces of music that I think he wrote which I'd like to talk about today is his Gran Partita for no fewer than 13 instruments uh, not all of them wins it has to be said 12 wind instruments plus a double bass and uh, so to that octet of two oboes two clarinets two bassoons and two horns he has added uh, two basset horns two more horns yes that's right so we're now to 12 plus the double bass uh, and 13 and so somehow we get this incredibly rich texture uh, the whole of the the whole gamut of the um, of, of the stave is top and bottom is covered and there's a richness to this sonority of all those wind instruments playing together particularly with the four horns at the center of it and then these uh, upper wind instruments led probably by you know the first oboe and the first clarinet have uh, amazing solo stuff they take turns really to have prominence through the piece um, and it's it's just the most wonderful exploration of new textures and new colors and new richness uh, and yet at the same time as always it's it's very typical of, of writing for for the instrument he brings out the best in each instrument challenges each instrument but as all with me, always with Mozart although he challenges you he never ever defeats you uh, some composers over challenge and a little bit defeat but Mozart never does he makes you work he really makes you work but he 
it, nothing is impossible. And this uh, serenade for 13 instruments, the Gran Partita, seven movements, incredible, quite long, 45, 50 minutes or something of music. Uh, I associate very much with the Mozart players. We performed it quite a bit when I was with them. We recorded it indeed. And I have neglected no opportunity ever since uh, to perform it whenever I can with beloved wind instruments. You can, of course, perform it without a conductor, um, and it often is. And indeed, in my former life, very, very former life, when I was an oboist too, um, I think the, some of the greatest chamber music experiences I ever had um, was playing this great, great piece. Uh, and for which reason I love, even now, to, to be involved with it and to shape it and to conduct it. Um, did it last year with my current group, the Music of the Baroque, or Baroque as I now call it, in Chicago. Uh, another wonderful group of wind players and uh, as always uh, it brings back great great memories of those first occasions when I performed it with the Mozart players. So seven movements and from the beginning uh, there's a slow introduction uh, when he states very um, formally really the texture of the piece uh, uh, before he goes into a, in, in a slow introduction, before he goes into a, a sort of charming sonata form allegro, uh, where each group of instruments has its, uh, its prominence and its turn to be subservient to somebody else. Uh, immediately one is reminded in a sense of, of 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 Handel in a sense you know when Handel wrote the the music for the Royal Fireworks to be played out of doors um, in Green Park during a firework display whoa um, he didn't have string instruments there largely because <laughs> the King George II said he didn't want uh, uh, string instruments at, uh, at this celebration of uh, of the fireworks in in uh, Green Park, um, uh, and so uh, Handel didn't write for them, and and in there's no sense at all in the fireworks music that anything is missing, though it has to be said that in later versions he did add strings to the fireworks music because uh, he does like the combination, and it also gives wind players a bit of a breather. But the great thing about this. Mozart piece is that actually the craft of it is that he gives everybody a bit of a breather. He knows that with wind instruments in particular the, these little million muscles in the upper lip are going to get very tired uh, if they're overblown, if they're overused, and yet somehow he manages to, to give every player a bit of time off uh, for, for the muscles just to reset and re-establish and settle and start again. It's tight, some of it, uh, but uh, it's he, he's very aware of that and I love him for that, that look, the real craft again of the of the professional composer who knows what players need as well as stretching them to produce at their best. So that that first movement is a sort of classic slow introduction and then a, um, a fast section. And then of the other um, seven movements, there are two sets of minuets with different trios, which reminds us very much that uh, music in the 18th century was still very much based on dance. Dance is never far from the surface, surface. even in sacred music, um, certainly dramatic music. Uh, uh, it's, it's still there, sort of hovering at the root. And so the minuets that pervade this glorious piece um, are, are 
stylish and bouncy and uh, a tremendous fun. Um, the third movement is the one really that is most famous, uh, where actually he reduces the texture. Uh, it is an adagio uh, of a sort of pulsating accompaniment and then a wonderfully sustained hanging melodic line which is shared and passed between the principal oboe and the principal clarinet and the principal basset horn and they sort of interweave their lines in an absolutely magical way. If you have seen the play and indeed the film Amadeus you may recognize that some of the most extraordinary writing about that particular movement of the Grand Partita. In fact, I found my old copy of Amadeus and uh, by Peter Schaffer. And I'm just going to read this because it's um, one of the best descriptions I know of any piece of music. And it describes in a speech spoken by Salieri as he hears this being rehearsed in an outside room, the effect that this music had on him. He says, it started simply enough, just a pulse in the lowest registers, bassoons and basset horns, like a rusty squeeze box. It would have been comic, except for the slowness, which gave it instead a sort of serenity. And then suddenly, high above it, sounded a single note on the oboe. It hung there, unwavering, piercing me through, till breath could hold it no longer, and a clarinet withdrew it out of me and softened it, and sweetened it into a phrase of such delight it had me trembling. The squeeze box groaned louder, and over it the higher instruments wailed and warbled, throwing lines of sound around me, long lines of pain around and through me. Ah, the pain, pain as I had never known it. I called up to my sharp old god, what is this? What? But the squeeze box went on and on, and the pain cut deeper into my shaking head. I was suddenly frightened. It seemed to me I had heard the voice of God, and it was the voice of an obscene child. Which is what Salieri thinks Mozart is at that point. I think that's the most wonderful description of that third movement of the serenade, the Grand Partita. So that's the third movement. The fourth movement uh, is a uh, another minuet. Then there's a romance, where again we get wonderfully uh, slow lines interwoven and accompanied and varied. And indeed, the penultimate movement is a set of a theme and a set of variations, where again you feel Mozart's invention is absolutely limitless. And again, the playing with the textures, playing with the colours, giving everybody a go, and then suddenly stopping your heart, as he did in the uh, in the romance in the third movement, in, in the adagio. Uh, and the variations have different pace. Some of them are slower, some of them are faster. All of them witty. There's always that smile in Mozart's music, even if we see it through tears. Mozart, like almost nobody else except Shakespeare, has that ability to make you laugh and cry at the same time. And finally, to finish off with a molto allegro finale, um, which is jolly, jolly difficult. I remember it well. It's uh, If you really want to take it the speed you want it, it's, it's really tough to play. I, I remember listening to a performance of this uh, great uh, piece in Aspen at the music festival where I go every summer a few years ago and uh, sitting next to me was the great bass baritone Eric Owens and Eric, like me, uh, was once an oboist. In fact, I think Eric still plays. <laughs> and he and I were sitting there th listening to this gorgeous piece together sort of breathing at the right moments together with the with the oboes 
And when we got to this last movement, which went off at an immense pace, by, performed by some great musicians in, in Aspen, Eric and I just looked at each other and shook our heads. Oh, that was always too difficult. So, there's my music at home, my Mozart at home, and I recommend this gorgeous, extraordinary, life-changing piece of music, which I hope will bring you great comfort in these difficult times. Take care of yourselves, as I say, and let us hope we all meet together on the other side and bring Mozart again out of the home and into the concert hall. Stay safe. Bye-bye.